6.30 a.m. in the morning, we received a call from a jogger who was jogging the area of Old Williamsburg Road and Daniels Drive in the Yorktown area of York County, and he had found a body on the side of the road. Our investigation began at that point, and we identified the victim that day as Tyosha Tanique Mitchell, age 25 from Richmond, Virginia, and our investigation determined that she had been shot to death. During the course of that investigation, we were able to identify and charge five individuals that we believe abducted her and killed her. Uh, she was abducted from her residence in Richmond, Virginia, and subsequently five individuals were charged with abduction and murder and some other charges. Yesterday, in York County General District Court, those charges were null prost. And the reason was, is this has been a cooperative investigation now for several months between the York Coast and Sheriff's Office, the York County Commonwealth Attorney's Office, U.S. Attorney's Office, and federal agencies, the FBI and ATF for the purpose of the federal government adopting this case and they will be the ones that will be prosecuting these individuals for this offense as they go forward. Now, as of today, two of those individuals, Denisha Tyvette Goodman and Acacia Jackson, have both been charged on federal indictments with kidnapping resulting in death federal offenses. The two males, Jaquan Allen Jones, Ezekiel Janelle Carney, are in federal custody right now on other charges that are as a result of their federal investigation. Uh, and any further development on that as to when they may be charged or what other charges are going to be forthcoming, you would have to contact the U.S. Attorney's Office for more information. And the last individual, Janika Langley, is going back to Richmond, where she will be serving time for a homicide that she was convicted of in 2020. So she will be going back to jail as well. So none of these individuals are going to be released. They are all in either federal or state custody. And going forward, at least four of them at this point in time, we'll be facing federal charges for the death of Tayosha Tanik Mitchell. So if you have any other questions, I'll try Sheriff, to answer them. the reason for feds being involved, is it the gang activity is yes. the reason? Yes, they were charged based on the RICO Act that gives the federal government uh, jurisdiction in this. Anytime the two state or federal cases uh, are performed in the furtherance of gang-related activity, that's a violation of the Federal RICO Act, and that's what this is based upon. Does it change the uh, level of punishment that they would be looking at? Well, the potential for all of them would be uh, life in prison without parole on federal offenses. So that's the potential. For the four? All four. If they're all four charged with that. Two of them right now, like I said, are charged with kidnapping that resulted in the death the other two have other federal charges at this point in time, and you'll have to contact the U.S. Attorney's Office to see if and when the others are upgraded to those same charges. I believe that's going to be the case, but it has not occurred yet. Can you say in this case which which person you believe may have been the trigger person in this case? I'm, I'm not going to discuss any of the details of what we know right now as far as um, what would be proffered as evidence in court. I've been in contact with the Mitchell family, and when I told them about what happened yesterday, there was a fear that this would be going away, but that was never really the case, so you're saying, that this was not going away for these individuals. No. Uh, we've known for some time, like I said, this has been a cooperative investigation between the agencies that I talked about for quite some time. We reached out to the family this morning, talked to the grandmother and to the mother, and they were both extremely relieved to know that nobody was getting out of jail and that this was not going to end, that they were going to be prosecuted federally. And from your standpoint, um, there was a transfer. Do you feel like this is a good outcome in this? Obviously, there was 
like Emily was saying, there was fear that, you know, it was just all going away. Is this what you would want to happen? Oh, I think that the, the moving of the case into the federal system is, is a very positive thing, uh, particularly for the fact that all of them face the potential of life in prison without parole. And I know the family seems to be excited about that as well. And we will all still be involved in the investigation because the investigators from the sheriff's office are the ones that collected uh, most of the evidence in this. So we'll still be heavily involved in the case. This terrible incident and how it happened, did it also shed some light on gang activity overall in this area and beyond in Virginia? Well, I think you saw recently there was another conviction uh, over in Hampton Roads in the federal system that's very similar where a woman was shot and severely injured and left for dead and they just convicted 10 individuals over there so i would say yes that, that shows the level of the gang activity that's in the hampton roads area and i think that these arrests and convictions will put a huge dent in that gang activity and sure you went over the gang before can you kind of refresh our memories on the, the gang name who they're affiliated with i don't have that in front of me right now uh but it's they were a uh, um, a very violent gang and they are very well known in the Hampton Roads area to law enforcement. What does it mean for law enforcement to be able to address gang related incidents in this way? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, what does it mean for law enforcement to be able to address these issues that we see with gangs in this manner? Well, I think what's important is this is the cooperation between the federal, state and local officials in this because a lot of times these gangs the territories that they're involved with can cross state lines and uh, can be rather large. So putting together all of our resources like that um, makes for a much more successful prosecution and I think it makes the community safer. I'm probably asking the wrong person, but more charges could follow these individuals, correct? That's possible, but you would have to follow up with the U.S. Attorney's Office for that answer. Okay. Anything else? Anything to the citizens who have been watching this the whole time and watching this unfold? Anything at all? Well, I think that by doing this today, we're relieving some of the concern uh, in the local community. When they saw the news release yesterday, I believe the uh, immediate response was uh, fear that this case was not going to be prosecuted. And I want everyone to know that that was never the case, that this has been, a, again, a cooperative, ongoing investigation between the federal and local agencies and they are going to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Does this show anyone in the community about this kind of crime and if you commit it, what kind of what you'll face? Well, I can tell you this. I said this early on before. I want the word to be that if you come to York County, Virginia and commit this kind of crime, you're going to be arrested and you're going to be prosecuted. How big of an issue is gang violence in the area? In York County, this is not um, a common occurrence. This was a very rare crime to have a crime of this type of violence. But as you've seen here recently, in the Hampton Roads area, there's a lot of gun violence going on right now. So it's important for all the local law enforcement agencies to work with their federal partners to try to uh, slow that down.